The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you can listen to me and see me. Uh, I'm really happy to host the first uh, uh, Indust uh, webinar. Uh, this is something we decided in this cost action group in order to we miss each other a lot with this uh, uh, online thing. So we decided to have this webinar every two weeks and uh, gather together and uh, listen to some very interesting talks. So these webinars, you can find uh, the, a list of these future webinars in the Indust uh, uh, website. Uh, the webinars consist of people that uh, work in uh, this cost action, people outside this cost action, and also people that uh, will present some recent publication that was uh, financed by the cost uh, in dust. Uh, since you are all muted, you can uh, write, uh, if you have some problems in the chat function on your right, and also, uh, for the questions, you can just uh, write your questions in the field uh, also on your right uh, in this question field. And uh, in the end of the talk, I will uh, uh, try to coordinate this discussion. So Sara Bassard, which is the PI of this cost action, will introduce the first speaker, which is Slobodan Nikovic. Sarah? Thanks a lot, Stelios. I'm sorry because my I had an issue with my webcam and you cannot see me, but it's not important today. Uh, as you may know, this is uh, the cost action in dust. I am glad to chair this action together with our first speaker of today. That is uh, Dr. Slobodan Nikovic. And if you know about him, he's an expert in modeling and he was working uh, since 1981 when he got her his PhD in numerical methods and in demonstrating uh, ideology and aerosol models. He is the, uh, the father of the dream model that most of you maybe will know about it because he's one of the reference models for dust forecasting. Uh, here in Europe, and then most of us, we were working with the model and also using the products that are published in different projects. Also, Nitschko uh, was participating in more than 30 international scientific projects, but in uh, uh, some of them from the European Commission, but also some of them related with the United Nations and also NASA. And He's a reference person in this community because as a WMO uh, officer, he was one of the by, of the architects of this SDS was initiative that now is quite successful in non community of DAS. But also he's uh, the chair of the of the regional board for North Africa, Middle East, and Europe. And also, as I said, is I have the pressure that. Uh, he's the vice chair of the Indies in that cost action. And today he will introduce the work that he, that he was doing in his visit to Iceland about the development of a dust forecasting system for the Icelandic region. And you have your time, Nitsko, for talk. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Okay, Sarah, thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, we gathered today with a quite nice number, uh, about 50, between 50 and 60 for the moment. And I will talk about uh, Icelandic dust forecasting, the uh, internal project of uh, Republic Hydromet uh, Service of Serbia. Uh, and uh, we'll give you a bit more details how we designed this system. It is based on dream model, dust model. But also at the end, I will also talk a bit uh, on uh, high latitude dust issues that we also touched with uh, our uh, research in, in the group. Anyway, uh, today uh, contributions are coming from the Belgrade Dream Team, uh, University of Belgrade and the uh, Hydmet Service. 
uh, Agricultural University of Iceland, uh, NOAA uh, uh, National Observatory of Athens, uh, uh, CNR Potenza, uh, Mace Head uh, Laboratory, and Czech Academy of Sciences. So all these colleagues contributed to uh, what we are going soon to publish, I hope, uh, as an as article. So two programs are behind the, the whole work. This is Cost Indust, uh, international network to encourage the use of mo uh, monitoring and forecasting dust products. Uh, you can see in this transparency what are the major objectives. In short, we tried uh, during this uh, uh, cost time, in this time, to get more closer the uh, producer community, research groups uh, that uh, are dealing with the dust uh, issues, with uh, a larger community like users in uh, governmental organizations, in uh, economic sectors, and so on. So this is one of the most successful current cost projects with uh, 29 European countries and number of countries uh, 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 all around the world. The other uh, program which is behind our research is WMSDS was uh, with a mission to enhance the ability of countries to deliver on time and uh, with high quality sand and dust on forecasts, observations and general information. So uh, this program has been established uh, in a formally in 2006 and I was uh, participating in designing the whole system which is based on three uh, uh, regional nodes as you can see on the bottom right uh, but also this is uh, of general uh, importance and uh, uh, at global level so this program became very visible uh, at the United Nations uh, level uh, through, through uh, collaboration with the different organizations. Anyway. Talking about uh, Icelandic dust, what are the basic facts? I have to say that uh, although I'm in a dust modeling business from 90s, I didn't know that uh, uh, Icelandic soil is uh, uh, one of the, not one, but the largest European source of dust, of mineral dust. And here are some facts I just took from Balva Duxon uh, uh, presentation, recent presentation. Uh, saying that there are uh, more than uh, 100, 130 uh, dusty days per year, emission up to 40 million tons, uh, ocean deposition, part of it goes to, uh, deposit, to, to the ocean with about 15, almost 15 million tons, and uh, iron deposition, which is important uh, component, iron oxide in, in, in the dust, with a quite substantial amount. Uh, Icelandic dust uh, and atmospheric modeling is the issue uh, of uh, large importance in the community, not only locally, but uh, more general. So uh, when we started to think about uh, developing the Icelandic dust model, uh, we recognized that there is no uh, prognostic Eulerian full dynamic uh, model for that. And uh, uh, in order to provide uh, daily dust forecast for the local community but also a wider community uh, we started to uh, uh, rearrange our dust model dream model to do it uh, for, for icelandic so uh, uh, dust sources of course there are a number of possible and important impacts like uh, influence to ocean cryosphere, uh, cryosphere uh, cold cloud formation highlighted dust uh, climate and of course for uh, local people the air quality, health, and the transport issue. I have to mention that the newest IPC statement says that uh, dust is an important forcer for the high latitude uh, climate. So in this context, we consider this as uh, important research. Uh, building the model was not, I would say, straightforward. Uh, there were a number of challenges. Small-scale dust sources are behind. Uh, this dust from Iceland is a volcanic of, of volcanic origin. Uh, specific thermodynamic uh, 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 aspects like low-level transport in general, not like in Sahara or some other places where dust can go several kilometers up. There are larger particle sizes in general than at some other places. Mineralogy is completely unique 
because of the volcanic uh, 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 sources. And unfortunately, there is not enough observations to validate any model uh, dealing with the Icelandic dust. So you can see uh, on the right uh, bottom what are the uh, ironet uh, uh, observations around Iceland, not many, uh, compared to what we have, for example, in the Mediterranean area where we can quite well uh, validate the different dust models. Uh, I picked up uh, some information, what are the existing um, modeling facilities for Iceland? And you can see the list of it. Some of the uh, models are of Lagrangian type, driven by different uh, kind of uh, atmospheric uh, model drivers. Uh, this is uh, UK Met Office name, University of Oslo has a, a similar approach. Silam uh, from Finland uh, have Eulerian approach and uh, corresponding uh, atmospheric driver. Icelandic uh, Met Office also have, as far as I know, a trial to, to develop such thing. Uh, Hilda from uh, Darmstadt University and DREAM, uh, which is now the for the moment the only operational model for the Icelandic dust. So uh, uh, this opens a possibility. I, I have to talk for the second as a chair of, of the one of the chairs of uh, WMOSDS was. We are dreaming or planning in the future to uh, establish not only uh, Icelandic dust, which is already at uh, their site, but also to add uh, uh, different models, different other models of, of the same kind, in order to compare the things and uh, to collaborate uh, in, uh, uh, between us. Talking about the Dream Icelandic model, this is the study uh, to be soon submitted for public, uh, publication. Uh, my colleague uh, Bojan Svetković is uh, the lead author of it, and I will try to give you some hint uh, what are the components of this model. On the top, you can see a uh, usual uh, scheme or, or uh, 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 drawing. Uh, what are the processes uh, uh, behind the, this, this kind of model? This is emission, this is turbine diffusion, vertical advection, uh, sedimentation, horizontal uh, advection of dust, uh, wet and dry deposition, and uh, that's more, more or less all what is uh, inside the model code. The equation is uh, complex, non-linear, and we have to use a large uh, computer resources to make, uh, let's say, two or three day forecast based on, on, on these elements. So, uh, briefly about the uh, specifics of our model is uh, uh, use of viscous sublayer for dust emission, where we exploited the uh, method of Janic 1994, where uh, there are three uh, turbulent uh, surface tur turbulent conditions like uh, weak uh, turbulent turbulence, rough and very uh, rough, uh, so that the viscous sublayer regulates the amount of emitted particles from the from the surface. You can see on the left bottom uh, the parametric equations for the surface con concentration that we use in in the model. Now. The challenge was how to uh, transform our uh, conventional uh, dream model used over Sahara, but also over some different uh, areas, and to apply it for, for the Iceland, Icelandic uh, area. So there are three key uh, components uh, defining the emission, like uh, dust mask, uh, clay silt uh, component, and the last term, uh, particle size distribution. So we had to replace all uh, middle uh, uh, row data, like uh, USGS for the for the masks, uh, stats go for the clay silt uh, distribution, and uh, Dalmida or Gomez, uh, what we have as a, as as an option uh, for the particle size with completely new data. And all of these data are of high, high resolution, like several uh, meters uh, resolution in horizontal. And thanks to Professor Arnolds from uh, University of Agriculture in Reykjavik, we were 
uh, in position to, to get this uh, raw data. But it took us, I have to say, several months to uh, achieve some uh, acceptable distribution of, of this data in our uh, dust model setup. This transparency uh, just illustrates uh, from which we started this uh, high resolution uh, data we received from Arnold's, uh, and then how uh, everything uh, uh, is set up in different uh, uh, model uh, resolutions. Uh, the last one is used uh, for operations, and you can see with about three kilometers horizontal resolution what we have in our experiments and operation. Uh, most of the uh, sources uh, indicated on the top uh, are well, uh, uh, how to say, represented in the model. So, talking about that, it was uh, unprecedented uh, value what uh, uh, Arnold uh, told us, or uh, his estimates, or his data used to, to estimate uh, dust hotspots which strangely enough these are yellow uh, spots on, on the figure uh, are responsible for production of 75 percent of total dust uh, in in uh, iceland all the others are weaker although uh, important so our uh, somehow uh, important uh, uh, work was to, to find the op optimum balance and to that all, all these components of emissions are represented uh, in, in a proper way. The other is uh, uh, data of uh, a Czech Academy of Science uh, uh, colleagues, uh, which uh, provided us uh, in several seven hotspots the data on, on uh, particle sizes. You, you can see on the top uh, that particle sizes are similar but not exactly the same. So we had the opportunity uh, for the first time, I would, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I know, this for the first time that uh, we introduced in, into the dust model uh, geographical distribution of particle sizes. And you can see also on the bottom that clay and seal components, is eight uh, particles in total in the model, we extended uh, compared to the standard dream the range to up to nine uh, microns uh, radius, which means that uh, the peaks uh, of, of the observation show that uh, particles are a bit larger than, than Saharan or some other uh, de de data uh, worldwide. Now, uh, I will uh, show you some of the raw uh, data that are going to appear in our uh, article that we are preparing. Uh, model tests for uh, uh, several dust storms uh, originated from, from uh, Iceland. First one was the September 2011 case. This was a short range dust episode affecting mainly uh, local people or local uh, community. And it didn't go too much around the, the island. So on the top right, you can see the MODIS uh, record of the dust. The problem with MODIS we are faced we were faced uh, all the time is most of the time over the island uh, the, the, there is cloudiness. So that's a bit tricky really to validate the model or to compare the model with, the, with this kind of observations. It's not Sahara where clear air, clear weather is uh, most of the time. So we have to deal with this, unfortunately. Uh, on the top right, this is some comparison with the PMs from observations in Reykjavik uh, for the period 12 to 13 September, and uh, the pattern was uh, reproduced well, although the uh, values are not exactly the same as, uh, as observed. Uh, the third uh, uh, graph is what our colleagues from NOAA uh, provided us. This is Calypso uh, profile of uh, uh, dust, uh, actually, actually of uh, extension uh, coefficient. And you can see that the dust, both in model and also in observations, doesn't go too high, up to maybe two kilometers for this particular case. And this is typical situation for many cases that we tested. Uh, uh, dust from Iceland uh, uh, travels low. 
sometimes uh, up to two and five kilometers or three kilometers, but generally this is low level uh, transport of dust, which is specific and different from the other dusts. And on the bottom left, uh, you can see uh, the model experiment where uh, major patterns as observed by Mondis uh, uh, we could uh, represent. And as I said, this was uh, very strong event uh, for the local community in Iceland. The other one, the other case, I'd just like to illustrate uh, how the model performs for different uh, uh, dynamics. Uh, this was the case where Paroe Island, red spot, was affected. That's definitely several uh, 100 kilometers, maybe up to uh, 1,000 kilometers away from, from the Iceland, where after day or two, uh, the dust uh, uh, arrived to this uh, island, uh, group of islands, and you can see on the upper right, the Modis uh, uh, data showing that this was a massive transport uh, uh, pulling up the, 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 the whole ocean area between uh, Brit Islands and, and uh, Iceland and Faroe Iceland. So uh, the model performed quite good, I would say. You can see the di difference between uh, the PM uh, model and, and observations. Uh, not perfect, but uh, at about the time when it, uh, dust arrived to Faroe Islands, uh, we really predicted it. Uh, and you can see on the right left uh, how the pattern looks like uh, after two days of transport from, from Iceland. <clears throat> so on the bottom left, you can see what is our operational, but also the domain of the model used for, the, for this kind of experiments. There are at least one or two that we'll add in, into the article. But I think this was enough to, to get feeling of, of model behavior uh, for these particular cases. Anyway, you have two links on the, on the top. One is a daily forecast of uh, dust from Iceland in SDS was. And the other, but the same basic product is on our uh, uh, Republic HydeMed service link. And the daily forecasts are done with the 3.5 kilometer with 28 uh, levels in the vertical and uh, NCEP uh, NMME or B is the atmospheric driver for uh, the con dust concentration, which is fully embedded into the atmospheric part as additional prognostic equation. So that's important because in every time step, there is update of all the variables, including dust. Uh, so on the on the right, you can see how it looks like if you log in to to, to BSC site, uh, SDS was site. But these days uh, there is no much dust because we also use uh, land uh, uh, snow snow cover to appropriately suppress the emissions because of of, of this kind of cover. Okay, so. Uh, this is this was more or less all about uh, our uh, forecasting uh, setup of the uh, dust uh, dream Icelandic uh, model. Uh, me, uh, but uh, in in our group, we are all, we are also thinking somehow to extend this high latitude dust research. So I listed here several. Uh, uh, ideas or items uh, that we plan in the future if we have, of course, enough resources to do this. Uh, first one is development of a circumpolar dream, not the same uh, uh, domain as we use for, for uh, Icelandic forecasts, but much wider. The other is uh, uh, we, we think that it's important to introduce in our research the atmospheric chemical processing of uh, dust, high latitude dust, uh, which means that we have to get a, a proper mineralogy. The, set, uh, the third one is cold cloud formation by dust, this kind of, kind of dust in high latitudes, including, of course, uh, Icelandic dust. And I'm all, already in contact with several groups uh, 
in Europe uh, showing interest for that. Uh, we have some facilities to do, do it in a proper way, I think. And the last, uh, uh, which is just a matter of idea, to introduce dynamic transport of uh, aerosol property related to darkness of, of the dust. I think this would be quite important issue because uh, there are a number of references analyzing what happens when darker dust uh, uh, deposit over the snow or over, over the ice uh, in, in high latitudes and changing changes the environment, uh, probably climate as well. So for all these uh, listed here, uh, uh, everything is in preliminary phase. Tests are done more to, um, uh, how to say, uh, to demonstrate uh, capabilities. Uh, if you have this kind of uh, modeling uh, system, uh, eventually to wide, make wider uh, research not only uh, to run it in a forecasting mode so uh, thanks to my colleague uh, Goran Pejanovic uh, we now have a version of the model uh, that covers on the right up the high latitude sources uh, uh, in a circumpolar high latitude dust dream and uh, uh, I mean, first uh, uh, question of everybody is what what kind of uh, uh, dust uh, sources we are going to use. Hopefully, uh, 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 Anna Vukovic from our group, uh, uh, working with the UNCCD and WMO, uh, produce a global uh, dust mask, which I would say this is the first step if a model has to use this kind of data. What was also our case? So uh, this is uh, uh, first guess, if you like, and then on top of that, you have to apply your emission scheme, your sealed clay uh, 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 amounts, uh, particle size distribution, and so on and so on. So anyway, on the right up, uh, left up, you can see quite interesting case of 4th November 13 where the model activated number of small scale sources from Iceland, from Greenland, uh, from uh, uh, Northern uh, Canada as well. And on the bottom uh, left, uh, we quickly checked what uh, uh, NASA shows. Uh, AOD uh, was covering a large area, but some patterns are quite similar to what we have predicted or uh, simulated for, the, for this one. So this really opens the question, uh, should we uh, continue with this? Shall we do uh, daily operations? Uh, shall we participate into some research related to uh, this aspect? And this is just the pen pending stuff. I mean, I have to say that we don't have really resources to uh, run different cases from time to time to establish uh, 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 forecasts for that, maybe. Uh, but the open question is the matter of resources of the group, which is not uh, uh, the best one, I would say, for the moment. Let's jump to another high latitude dust, which is not uh, Icelandic dust at all. And uh, uh, in our tests uh, with the global version, now global version of DREAM, Dust DREAM, uh, we ran the Australian dust uh, January 2020. It was a massive dust storm in, uh, in, uh, in this continent. And the circulation was such that uh, dust was brought to At Atlantic. And after that, uh, because we have ice nucleation uh, component in, in the model as in any other of our models, uh, shows on the bottom, uh, uh, bottom left is uh, dust concentration or dust load. The middle one is ice nuclei generated by uh, mineral dust. And the third one is the only observational evidence we found in the community. This is uh, ice clouds from uh, NASA. We tried to contact several groups uh, at least to have a hint uh, how close or far we are with our simulation. 
I mean, it looks reasonable, but unfortunately, we didn't find anybody uh, making some uh, 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 profiling or, or similar things to, to validate the model. So I'm happy if anybody has an idea to contact us uh, uh, so that we can at least uh, uh, continue uh, with this kind of variation. Okay, the next issue, what I already mentioned, is how iron oxides from uh, Iceland uh, uh, affect the, uh, the, the marine community. And uh, uh, we worked uh, as a group uh, several years ago, we published uh, an article on uh, iron processing in the atmosphere, but this was the experiment uh, related to uh, Central Atlantic. Now, our general intention is to everything move and reproduce for the Icelandic dust, which is not the same kind of dust, not the same kind of uh, uh, amount of, of iron and so on. But uh, in principle, this is a process that uh, starts with the uh, mineralogy of the sources, pollution which uh, increases uh, iron oxide uh, solubility, the same with clouds, uh, radiation uh, also affects uh, or increases the, the solubility of, of the iron oxide. And finally, uh, size uh, separation, long uh, term, long -term uh, transport means uh, smaller particle sizes at the end and more exposed to, to, to the environment. So uh, our experiment uh, for, for the Central uh, Atlantic was encouraging but we didn't continue with this. So now we see the opportunity to reproduce a similar experiment, but for the Iceland. Uh, hopefully uh, there is a project, fragment project of uh, our colleague, uh, Carlos Perez, ongoing research uh, using the satellite data and with a plan to uh, produce high resolution mineralogy data set for the TUM community. So I count really on this kind of data in the future to make at least for Iceland or highlighted dust, uh, better information about the, the, the uh, mineralogy of, of uh, soils. Getting back to uh, Iceland, we made a first trial how eventually to prepare the data for the uh, iron oxide uh, processing. We started uh, again from uh, all of our Arnold's data provided uh, uh, us with the all soils, 15, 16 soils are there the first map on the, uh, on the left. Uh, then we overlap this data with the, uh, the map you see at the very beginning with the sources. And then as a result, we extracted uh, some uh, soil types, which uh, seems to be um, iron rich uh, uh, components. So we consider this as a uh, starting point maybe to con continue with the experiments uh, and hopefully uh, uh, our colleague Zongbo Shi, Professor Shi from University of Birmingham and his group uh, made recently estimate of the iron content in several points uh, over the ice Iceland but also the potential solubility of these sources so uh, at least we have uh, several components more or less uh, ready maybe to to advance with uh, this kind of research uh, but the question is uh, how how uh, iron processing uh, uh, should uh, behave uh, uh, for the icelandic soil sources first in this uh, highlighted dust high latitudes there is less pollution more clouds than in Sahara or in Central Atlantic, low level dust transport, maybe different particle separation, and photo reduction, less sun. So we made an uh, artificial experiment for the moment using uh, the setup of uh, our Atlantic uh, tests uh, and uh, use this uh, first guess on, on iron content over the Iceland and you can see just the pattern uh, on, on the right down. So this is not verified, but uh, uh, facility exists maybe to continue. Once again, there is a matter of uh, agreement uh, uh, how, how to continue uh, this kind of, of uh, experiments in the future. Cold cloud formation is another aspect of uh, importance for the community. Uh, 
uh, several years ago we published an uh, article, 2016, coupling uh, our dream ice nucleation and using the data from the atmospheric driver, temperature and uh, uh, relative humidity to calculate using particular parameterizations in, in the community a uh, number of ice uh, nuclei uh, with the origin dust. So that's what we are doing, for, for example, for the Mediterranean on uh, our website. You can see daily forecasts of, uh, let me see, uh, well, of DREAM on the left, uh, which is uh, integral, vertical integral of ice nuclei. Uh, log the rest of that, and uh, uh, in comparison, every day we can we, we compare with the uh, log 10 of uh, ice water path uh, coming from from uh, MSG Severi. In most of the cases, these patterns are similar, as you can see in this uh, particular example. So, this facility of uh, using uh, the ice nuclei um, uh, component of the model. Uh, could be uh, now implemented for Icelandic dust. What we show here is uh, uh, our standard Ulrich uh, scheme and, and uh, Demot scheme. So this is not, I would say, completely appropriate uh, parameterization for high latitude dusts uh, uh, coming from Iceland. Hopefully, uh, there are several groups, at least two or three that I know, uh, to replace our uh, Ulrich 2017 and also the uh, uh, parameterization of ice nuclei with Icelandic specific uh, parameterization schemes. Options are, uh, I recently talked with Ben uh, Murray, uh, uh, his group is uh, uh, actually uh, proposed already uh, parameterization for Icelandic dust. So we have to incorporate into our model, of course. Uh, Conrad Kandler and Kerstin Stefansi, uh, with, with their uh, national project, also have uh, on the list or, or as a task uh, ice, nuclei, ice nucleation uh, parameterization. So all this data could should replace our current IN scheme in, in, in the DREAM model. Uh, but a part of that, uh, uh, even uh, not completely appropriate ice nucleation scheme of Ulrich, uh, shows uh, that there are at least some similarities in patterns. Uh, if you look on the left, what model gives, and also on the right, what uh, uh, I think NASA, NASA uh, uh, shows uh, concerning the distribution of, of clouds. So I think I'm, yes, I'm close to the final. Uh, maybe that, that's a bit earlier than uh, planned. The plan was uh, to, to have uh, 45 minutes. I think uh, we are now 40 minutes. And with this, I will end my presentation. Uh, the agreement with the uh, manager of, of this session, with uh, Stelios and with uh, Sara, is that uh, uh, they provide me with your questions so that we can discuss a bit uh, in this unusual way, not uh, face to face, uh, but I will try to do my best to, to, to reply uh, whatever was asked by you. Thank you, Dr. Nikovic. Thanks a lot, Mitch. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Stelero. Yes, there, are, uh, there is a number of questions and comments in the chat. I will try to read them and uh, summarize them a little bit. And uh, at some point, maybe if it's needed, I will unmute the person that asked in order to be more clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I will take them as they came. And uh, the first question is about the comparison of the DREAM versus the Calliope. And the question from Svetlana Tiro is why model extinction is zero in the lowest 200 to 300 meters? So it's this uh, okay. Calliope related uh, figure. Yes. Uh, so the question uh, is the comment from Santiago. 
Uh, sorry, uh, can I ask a question by question? Maybe that's better. Yes, the question here is why yeah. the model definition yeah. is zero in the lowest 200 to 300 meters? Well, uh, that's, uh, I guess, related to the um, planetary boundary layer effects uh, in the model. So, uh, of course, you, you cannot expect uh, full uh, correspondence with the observations. But I have to say that we are quite uh, happy specifically with this uh, uh, validation component uh, because the, the pattern in, in general is really, to our opinion, not bad. Uh, you have the low level dust, uh, the maximum is more or less uh, uh, comparable with the observations. Uh, but of course, there are some differences. So you, you might expect. <laughs> Always uh, this, this kind of uh, difference between the model and and, uh, and uh, observations. Okay, another question from Santiago Gasso. It's uh, also about the altitude, and he asked if we can assume that it's all below the boundary layer temperature inversion, or if we have seen some cases where the dust uh, is lower than 1.5 kilometers but above the boundary layer. Uh, to be honest, we didn't go into these details, but uh, this is a good question and uh, we should spend some time, maybe even go to our archives and try to find out uh, 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 what, what is the uh, extent of the boundary layer and uh, how dust, at least in our simulations or in our forecast now, uh, relate to that one. Uh, for the moment, we uh, extensively tested the model at least for, for this uh, article with three cases. Two of them I showed some, some of the results. Uh, the third one is uh, also long range, uh, but I cannot uh, exactly uh, answer to that one except that uh, we can spend some time and try to find out. M maybe that's a mat matter of uh, another research uh, uh, issue to, to see how how the low level dust uh, uh, compares or, or interacts with the uh, PBL. Okay. Uh, second question is if you could briefly mention how the dry and wet deposition is implemented in the model. Uh, well, that's a rather, uh, uh, how to say, uh, straightforward. In our standard dream, uh, this is uh, proportional to the rainfall. I know that, for example, Carlos Perez in his model has much complex. Uh, in cloud, uh, uh, out of the cloud, uh, uh, wet deposition. But in our case, we still keep uh, the original scheme, which is not uh, ideal, not perfect, but I would say in general, it, it is quite useful. Uh, so that, that's that's my answer. To that one. Uh, Stelios, tell me uh, how many questions there are so that I can somehow fit to... Uh -huh. I mean, we'll try to uh, spend another 10, 10 minutes or uh, and try to answer these questions. There are not too many, but still uh, there are at least five, I guess, more. Okay, okay. Uh, so Carlos uh, Perez is asking about the size distribution used and uh, when you saw the soil, if you are showing soil or airborne size distributions, how these were measured, and if they are related to emissions or could, could be affected by the position? Uh, I don't well, know the details of the measurement techniques. Uh, Czech colleagues uh, did it. Uh, uh, probably, uh, but we are not in position maybe to, to, to share the discussion uh, or this, this platform. Uh, uh, Paula should know much more details. I think uh, uh, the, the, the guys picked up in uh, seven hotspots the, the, the soil material and then uh, tested in uh, the laboratory. So definitely uh, this is not uh, dust already raised from the surface, but uh, uh, laboratory assessment, I would say. I hope that I'm not wrong about that. Uh, and coming back to that one, uh, to, 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 to this uh, transparency, I just uh, marked what is the model range up, up to nine microns uh, in radii 
is the range that we have in the model. But once again, the peak is uh, uh, at about six, six something uh, uh, microns, which is larger, a bit larger than uh, that we have in uh, Dalmeida or, or some other uh, parameterization schemes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then another question from Anis Sony is, uh, what are the emissions inputs that were used? Uh, and uh, and uh, if there are differences with Sahara, I think you mentioned some of yeah, the differences. Actually, there is there is a large difference. I mean, uh, I will get back to this uh, slide. So everything is relating here with the high resolution uh, uh, high resolution data on, on, on potential sources. So in Sahara, this is one kilometer, Jinu, one kilometer as well. Uh, Stats go uh, before for uh, place tilt uh, one kilometer. But in, in, uh, in this particular case, I don't know exactly. I never asked uh, uh, Oli Arnold, uh, what does it mean one over uh, uh, 100,000? Maybe somebody else can, can ask me. I'm not. Uh, uh, geo, uh, geo of geography, like, let's say, uh, education. But I understand that it goes down to uh, uh, a small number of uh, uh, hundreds of, of meters. Of course, uh, models cannot deal with the current resolutions of three or uh, four kilometers uh, with everything. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the most I would say difficult uh, uh, task was at the very beginning where our colleague uh, uh, Slavko Petkovic spent months, literally, first to read all these data which are in a kind of strange uh, geographical projections, local projections, then uh, to convert somehow at the end to, to the model grid, uh, which is latitude, longitude, transform grid, whatever. Uh, but also at the same time, it was not um, uh, manual work, but it was a work where you all the time try to see if you lost some important information from the original map. So it was uh, uh, forth and back uh, uh, trial uh, to 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 well to end up with uh, we think with a reasonable map uh, that we have on, on the bottom right uh, that, that we use for the moment. So you can see some hotspots appearing at the right places, like in, in the first map up, uh, but also there are areas with uh, less uh, uh, potential emission, as uh, Oli uh, provided us with uh, his estimates about the uh, geomorphology uh, features of uh, hotspots and the other uh, uh, productive uh, soils in, in, in Iceland, as, as I already showed. Okay. There is another question from Urania Supiona asking if there are some seasonal patterns of Icelandic dust emissions. Yeah, there are. <laughs> I cannot uh, say uh, exactly what are. I mean, uh, uh, at least. Uh, uh, Talking about the, our forecast, uh, last month and a half, there is almost nothing uh, coming from Iceland. Uh, but I advise you to look uh, uh, Pavla Daxon's and uh, Oli Arnold's references. There are a number of them. Uh, talking about uh, what you are asking for. What is the seasonality? Uh, what are the uh, uh, annual and the seasonal uh, activities of this task and so on and so on. I simply didn't like to enter to this uh, this terrain, which is not completely mine. Of course, it's important, but uh, I advise that uh, that you really consult uh, uh, their references. There may be ten or so uh, articles talking about different aspects uh, uh, of, of uh, and feature of, of uh, Icelandic dust. Okay, there is a question from Yuri Varga about uh, some geological aspects of uh, the Icelandic dust. And uh, it's a long question and comment, but to summarize, 
I would say that there are a lot of differences from Saharan dust to the Icelandic dust, and you have the age of the fine grain particles, you have the shape of the particles, it's different, more sharp. So this, uh, the question is that these different particle shapes probably should have an impact on dust mobilization. So is how these features have been taken into account in the model. This is a, uh, it's a long yeah. question, but maybe briefly you can comment on how you dealt with uh, these kind of differences. Okay, talking about the shapes, so there are a number of references. Uh, our, um, Olga Kosnikova, uh, then also NOAA group uh, with Vasilis uh, Amaridis, uh, uh, dealing with, with the shape of, of, the, uh, of the particles from different uh, sources, of course. Even this opens the question of uh, um, giant uh, particles, why such differences in, in, the, in the shape could or not contribute to long, long uh, transport of uh, big, big particles. Uh, uh, in our case, uh, we are pragmatic and our, our uh, particles are uh, of spherical uh, shape, not, not more than that. Uh, I don't say that this, uh, the other aspect is not important, but uh, uh, at least we don't have this comp uh, component in, in our model. Uh, but talking about the mineralogy, that's uh, the most tricky maybe work that we, we are going to do in the future. I uh, have to mention once again uh, Zongbo's uh, uh, contribution. We exploited his methodology of, of or parametrization that he applied for uh, Saharan dust. But I have to say that, that over Sahara, there were just a few measurements uh, all over the uh, domain there. And based on that, uh, Zongbo and later myself and the group that work on that, uh, pro well, developed uh, accordingly the, the parametrization uh, for uh, 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 iron oxide uh, uh, solid solubilization with a lot of un unknowns, but uh, order of mag magnitude of our result for the Atlantic was uh, comparable what the measurement says. In this particular case, as you can see in this uh, transparency, uh, recently uh, published by uh, Clarissa Baldo from his group, from Zongbo's group, see how much iron is uh, uh, in, in the soils. Over Sahara, that's uh, uh, four, five, six, uh, depending on where you are uh, doing measurements, but here several times more. That's one thing. And I listed uh, on the on the top what we might expect uh, uh, after all. I, as I said, less pollution, because pollution is one of uh, important ingredients uh, increasing, uh, which increases the solubilization of, of iron oxides. But on the north, I'm sure that there is some pollution, but not ex excessive. More clouds, if you look at the maps, most of the uh, large area, high latitude dust is under clouds. So clouds are uh, more, more uh, acid, acid than uh, non-cloud uh, areas, means that might be a uh, model will uh, react and uh, be more productive uh, in terms of solubility of iron in, in, in the clouds. Uh, Low-level dust, that's what we already discussed. That's not the same as in Sahara, it travels but in a low levels. Uh, and again, uh, photo reduction is not uh, too much active because there is no, no sun. Uh, all, all these ingredients are uh, not the same as we did for the Saharan dust. So I expect uh, uh, large differences, but I cannot, of course, say how this will be performed by the model uh, in terms of results. Again, the largest problem is to find the data and uh, to validate the model. So that's that's an uh, open question. Yes, uh, there is a number of comments that uh, probably uh, Someone can read also in the chat, but uh, about the importance on the cloud-related research about uh, uh, Carlos talking about the fragment, which is performing also measurements uh, at sources by emit. Uh, 
there is a question on iron that it's a little bit not answered, but the question from Iron Amateurs is, is if there is a plan to use this iron solubility modeling to predict ocean fertilization. So if yes. exactly the like that. model capabilities to incorporate other complex factors, like yeah. oceanographic, physiological factors, yeah. uh, maybe it's a little bit uh, difficult to uh, answer it briefly but maybe if you have a brief i can briefly comment uh, that's exactly the, the story behind so uh, we plan we have at least facilities uh, from our previous experiments to use and modify and adjust to the uh, icelandic uh, dust uh, you saw the number of data we plan to incorporate it's not final but uh, uh, that, that's the way that we should uh, uh, we, we, proceed uh, I have to get back to to uh, and actually wanted to uh, discuss with Sarah before the meeting starts uh, there are a number of things that could be done with us but also with uh, other groups uh, we are really willing to collaborate uh, what is missing at least in our case but I'm sure uh, the other will suffer, suffer similar uh, for the moment, all the work uh, related to I Icelandic dust and the high latitude dust in, in the HydMed service is a uh, side work, uh, not explicitly funded by external sources. So uh, we already uh, uh, initiate within cost an idea to look forward for uh, some uh, larger uh, project, uh, European Union maybe or similar, uh, that should somehow integrate all the uh, uh, results and uh, uh, achievements made by cost, including this highlighted dust. Uh, so th this is my concern, to be honest, because uh, uh, this, in our case, this is not very sustainable on a long term, but I hope that we will find a way through collaboration with different groups and also through maybe a common project in, in the future to make these things doable. I think we know most of the things how to do, but uh, uh, this might, must be the same answer also or, or concern uh, with the other groups. Yes, well, there is the potential and uh, just to take uh, the opportunity here to say that this kind of presentation and discussions, they are quite often in, in dust, but here in the webinar, we have also a number of people that uh, are outside uh, this cost community, let's say. So I would like to say in this first uh, webinar that the cost community is open to any questions or to uh, if you want to collaborate or ask something or uh, just uh, uh, email someone that uh, you hear here that, that uh, it's uh, working on this aspect that you are interested in. in our community in Indus, this is quite natural, but still for the people that are now for the first time seeing this community, I think we are open to this kind of discussion as, as Dr. Nikovic have started here. And uh, personally, I will try to keep this webinar to something one hour. Is... Yes, yes, Sarah, sorry. Yeah, just, just, just to compliment, I would take the role presenter and I would like to to raise the way that you can contact us and also you can contact the community if you go to the cost in this website you can find here all the events and all the materials and also with the people but also uh, I would like to raise your section of member area and here we have the different channels where you can contact us and I want to raise you the possibility to go with our Slack channel. Then you can start discussions also here. And as you will see, it's very interactive. If then you don't hesitate to find a way that you can get us. We are an open community, I have to say. Then this is the way that we are pushing any collaboration that you imagine. And of course, uh, all the contacts of us are in the website. It takes a little bit of time, sorry, but um, oh, yes. 
the industry website never is really get informative. So for people that mm -hmm. haven't been there, just visit the website and you'll see a lot of different aspects, including also the schedule of the webinar. And uh, I don't know, Sarah, mm -hmm. if you want to say something more. But uh, I think I, I will stop the Let's check the website the for the next end. Yeah. All the questions, uh, we will pass all your questions to Slobodan, Slobodan and if there is anything that he can extend, uh, expand in, your, in the question, I'm sure that you will only make the first one, no worries. And of course, you, his email is also in the website and you can contact him directly if you are interested for anything. And the recording of this uh, webinar will be also uh, accessible through the website. Then you can download and listen again if you are interested. Yes, I agree with Sarah. A any, any other question that uh, was not asked uh, during the session, uh, I'm going to contact you whoever is interested in for some more details okay uh, thank you very much dr nikovic for this uh, presentation and thanks to everybody that uh, spent this hour to listen to him and uh, we are waiting for you for our next uh, webinars thank you very much bye bye thank you to to, to everybody oh, just, just, just wait